Ready? Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, and uh, we are live. We are approximately 60 seconds behind schedule, so I apologize for that. It's been a long time since we've been uh, late. late, but uh, we will start off this evening with a brief intro. Uh, it says puppies and 2023 breedings. We're going to talk a little bit about that this evening as well as That is on, I think it's on. Oh, it's on manual from earlier. Mm-hmm. It was. No? No? Where? It what? pulled there. It just seemed a little off. But, everybody, uh, yes, absolutely. We are playing Bird Dog Chat Bingo this evening, and to get a bingo card, you need to be a patron. Um, just the the quick patrons are the largest supporter of everything that we do, Standing Stone Online. So, in order to become a patron, you need to go to patreon.com slash Standing Stone Kennels. You can... Join just for support and the evening bingos, or you can also um, get various levels of self-help if you're trying to train your dog at home all the way, but not limited to live chats where Kat and I can actually be in your training sessions with you, um, as well as uh, chat on the regular. This evening, we are giving away a easy lead collar combo. So it's a custom collar. We have to get the size. You would go online and buy this, but then you can get an easy lead either to match or to... um, Compliment. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Compliment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Um, then we'd give you a discount code so it ends up being free. So the first bingo of the night gets a easy lead collar combo. And then, like Ethan said, we're going to be talking about our 2023 breedings for the year. Uh, little Pheasant Fest recap, and some other fun announcements about seminars and things like that coming up. So if you have a question, we also answer those, but we usually wait to the end. Um, And then we do give preference to anyone that throws a super chat up there. If you've got a question that's burning a hole in your pocket, we'll get to those. Um, And then we like to roll through some check-ins right away and then get rolling with our evening agenda. First and foremost, I'm going to throw out, we have... um Water and with BCAAs in it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's pr- pretty much this evening. We are running on empty esque tanks. We had uh, one of our speaking of breedings, we had one of our first litters born here um, just a few a well, week second, ago. A few, and then few our days second ago. litter. Yep. Just a couple <laughs> days ago. And uh, those litters take. A lot. A lot um, and sometimes even more than normal. So we are burning the candle at both ends and running a little low on sleep. So if some of the stuff we say tonight doesn't make sense, that's What why. else is new? <laughs> well, it is Ethan, so we'll yeah. just yeah, chalk yeah. it up to that. Do some check-ins. I'm going to. We've got uh, Mitch and Puppy Clutch, love the name, by the way, from Delano, Minnesota. We got Sock Rapids, Minnesota. Hey, Aaron. Caleb Walker. um, Caleb and Chesney Walker from Three Oaks Kennels. We got Central Missouri and Heartland, Wisconsin. And then we got Miss Kelly with uh, Mac and Jax from New Jersey. We've got Angleton or Angleton. Angleton, Texas? Potentially mispronounced. Probably. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then, hey, Melanie, Don and Melanie from Minnesota, St. Louis, New York. Hey, Mark, and you've got Sierra getting out on some birds I've seen. Ashley and Connor in Oklahoma. Hey, Ashley. Um, Sturgis, South Dakota. That's so cool. Uh, Southern California. Cold and snowy Southern California. That sounds like an oxymoron. Um <laughs> Should be warm and beachy. And then they call it sunny 
Sunny so SoCal. Yeah, I know. Hey, Robert. And you've got Taylor, Chief, Lily, and Rye from Springfield, Illinois. Awesome. Rock Excited to see that little pup pup here not too long. Uh, we've got Northwest Wisconsin. Hey, Corey. What else we got rolling? Albertus, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, McQuanago, Wisconsin. Annie Nuss from Texas. Sometimes you're checking in from Kansas, sometimes from Texas. You just never know where you're going to be at. Um, and maybe sometimes from Iowa still once in a while. You're late. It's okay. It's okay. No big deal. We didn't get rolling. We were a little bit late, too. Uh, Vancouver, Washington, Marissa, Illinois, South Central Indiana, Western Colorado. We've got Canby, Oregon. Middle of the Mitten. That must be in Michigan. Charles, your last check-in from El Tesoro. I don't think that those are tears of sadness. Those might be tears of joy. I think you're missing your home after four months away. We're missing you for sure. And I'm missing my doggies, so I can't wait for them to be back. Just a week away. Iowa. Got to talk with Ethan at Pheasant Fest. That's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. What do you mean won't remember you? Um, I would re I would remember your face hundred percent. All I see is an is a name and and, and it's kind of uh, and maybe your name is Chad. Yeah, Chase brother Brittany's Chad. Um, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, Jackson, Mississippi. Whoop! We've got a Hutchinson, Kansas in the house and Texas. Cool guys, thanks all for checking in. I didn't see a single international check in right now, so Canada who knows? Was there? There was. Oh, Someone who was the person that was late, right? Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Kaylin, you're from Canada. Yep. There you go. But did she say where she was from? Um, yeah, it said. Okay, I believe you. I don't know where. Oh, there. from Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. We did. Sorry. Ah. That. Already not okay. making sense. So um, just as a quick reminder, playing for a easy lead Collar combo. Collar combo. First bingo wins, one giveaway this evening. Um, so I want to go out of off. order. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked about Kay. puppies and breedings and Pheasant Fest uh, recap and then seminars. <coughs> but I want to talk about seminars first because um, it's kind of just a short little thing to chit chat about. But if you're a patron, you may have already seen the announcement because we made it there first for you guys, gave you all the opportunity to sign up first, but we will be doing, and by we, I mean Ethan and Bob, will be doing another Lone Stone or Standing Duck uh, seminar, a combination of retriever training and versatile dog training, and that will be over Cinco de Mayo weekend. So Bigger and badder than ever. Last time, it was a single day, and the biggest complaint that we got was that people wanted a little bit more time for the weekend. So we've added some of the pieces that um, were most enjoyed or we were told were most enjoyed out of the process. We did a fireside chat, kind of hang out in the evening and things like that. We're going to slide that into a Friday night if you can. Cinco meet. de Mayo celebration. Yep, meet and greet if you can make it for that. And I feel like I am loud. There we go. Um, a... Meet and greet on Friday night, and then a full day of seminar with an evening um, chat Saturday night, and then Sunday um, it would cut off at noon, where before it was just Friday all, or Saturday all day, excuse me. I am putting the link right now in here for anybody that's interested. We only have a few spots left. We just announced it. We only have a few spots left. Um and don't trust the – I'm manually tracking the Stop. spots because it didn't really work right. So don't look at what's on there and go, oh, there's plenty. There's not plenty. There's only a few left. Because we had to – there's so many variables. Account for, yeah, the variables of if you want to come as just an observer or with a dog or with a plus one. So there's lots of variables on how people can show up to this thing. So there's only so many spots. If you're interested, definitely reach out with more questions or get your spot saved by checking out 
with that link right there. Um, but it's going to be a fun weekend. I will be around. Not that it's about me, but I'm going to be able to help out as needed. Um, oh, it's definitely about you. No. Um, I'm not on the koozie, so definitely not about <laughs> me. Um, so I'm excited, though. Ethan and Bob are always a lot of fun to hang out with, be around, and they know a lot about dog stuff. So it's going to be a really great weekend, um, and I always love socializing and hanging out with you guys. So The other side of it, our new pond is acts, uh, we built the pond, just in case you didn't know that, and it is completely full of water. So um, that happened. That escalated quickly. <laughs> Uh, I had plans and including, but not limited to ordered seed and we got some help with that. It's in the process here. Yep. Um, and I won't be able to actually put it in with my drill like I had planned to do in the flats and different things because it's pond underwater. Is full. Yeah, so already underwater. we're going to try and broadcast some things in and maybe deep shovel uh, plant some things i don't really know exactly what all is going to work we're going to try some shoveling in cattail bombs uh around the islands and then i'll probably regret later adding cattails to the pond but we will deal with it um and then cattails uh, make for great cover though guys especially when we're working on duck search stuff i'm going to so. just remind you of that when i send you to go fight them I remember training in Brewster when there were these giant, giant cattail, like, floating bog things that were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we kept going, I wish there was a way to just take a chunk of this with us. So. Yes. So, <coughs> um, it'll be cool. That'll be available. We have a little pond for any of the puppies that show up. That'll be sweet swimming. S couldn't find another S word there off the top of my head. But um, that'll be cool. It's a mostly, or it's a more versatile dog geared version this time because we'll be in Kansas where we have more bird dog <laughs> access to stuff. Um, so more bird dog action, more bird dog action, versatile dog stuff, and then applying retrieving to that. If there are folks that are, which I know are some are already signed up that are retriever specific, there will be plenty there um, for y'all, including but not limited to the potential of strike dog flushing stuff and it'll be why fun. not yeah why not we'll have fun duck search is coming yes ian it's uh it's not quite duck search right now it's kind of like bear Bare dirt ground. islands and water um but i'm already looking at the pond expansion so it, it's not big enough it doesn't seem as big as what i would like it to be but that's that's it what she said um <laughs> Now, moving on to our Pheasant Fest Ouch. update. We uh, had a blast at oh, Pheasant Fest. Oh, that's not what you said. That's what she said. Yeah, right? Hopefully, you're not. Moving on. So, Pheasant Fest was amazing. Was I always enjoy those events. Um, yeah, they're so, it was. so specific to our industry. People that hunt, people that own bird dogs, they're at Pheasant Fest. And stopping cool. by to say hi while we were at the um, DT booth. We zipped over to Orvis's booth, learned about some really cool new stuff that they've got going on. We've been throwing some shorts up on YouTube talking about their products. Um, we got to hang out at the Yukonuba booth. Uh, they're always great people to hang out with and chat with as well. And then um, I got to stop at the Her Upland booth, which um, there's a short coming out on YouTube about that here soon, as well as I'm going to be recording a podcast with Courtney talking a little bit more about what her Upland is, but she got COVID. I had a cold, so we had to put that podcast on hold, um, until we're both feeling just a little bit better. So that'll be coming out soon. Definitely love, uh, talking about the cool opportunities that her Upland is going to have. Um, Ethan and I are actually going to be um, seminar leaders for one of their seminars in July, um, part of the um, team that will be leading that. So it'll be kind of fun. I'm just coming for the snacks. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and thank you, Kelly. I did get a really cool hat from the Her Upland booth. They had um, these hat bands made with feathers from Upland species um, and then these little hat sprigs and stuff. They were so cute. I couldn't resist. The hardest decision was what color hat to pick. So <laughs> I went with a more neutral color so I could wear it more often. And then Ethan's like, wear it more often. You're going to literally wear it to Pheasant Fest. Wherever are you else going to wear that? And I'm like, well, you're not wrong, but I can wear it with more outfits at a Pheasant Fest now. 
So, anyway. Touche. Um, the next thing that we wanted to touch on was... The puppies. The puppies. Oh, I was just going to mention, I've got my... A homie hat. Homie hat on. Uh, all in the... Spirit. Spirit. There we go. Sorry, folks. Firing just a smidge slower than normal, and that's saying something. Um, in the spirit of Pigeon Videos, we filmed two new videos today. One is a loft update showing all of the insane amount of changes that I have made to my tiny loft behind the kennel. And the other is a racing season recap from 2022. Um, and how I basically break down all $17,000 that I won last year and all of the birds and kind of show um, everything that happens there. So it's kind of cool to see, to look back on and talk about how it all works and the different races and everything. So um, now, puppies. So... We talked about um, our planned breedings on a live stream a while ago, and then I put the announcement of the planned breedings in a newsletter a while ago, and then finally <laughs> got the website updated and pushed out because that is a little more um, labor-intensive and technical um, from an updating a website standpoint for me. So it took me a little we bit of time. A lot of the young, the new young up-and-comers are getting bred, so they all needed new pages and things took like that. took a lot of building so, to yeah. get all the pieces together because we like to put a lot into um, the breeding pages and the information that we're providing from pedigrees of the dog themselves, pedigrees of the puppy crosses, and then bios for each of the dogs that are being bred, all of their stats um, from, you know, size, coat, um, any testing that they've done, health clearances that they've done, put all that information up there, pictures, um, and then combining that into the upcoming litters page. So lots of little moving pieces to get in line to um, make it all work and jive together. Um, and then updating the pedigrees is actually something that um, – we have to do every year because new dogs are getting titled. That changes every other dog's pedigree on the website. So, for example, Vex becoming a UT Prize 1 dog, that changed a lot of the pedigrees of his puppies. Um, so, Muddy and Hazel and Splash and Trix. And, and not that Trix is his puppy, but is out of Quest. So, like, so many pedigrees needing to be and updated as well. And yeah, all the pedigrees, basically, Docs just redoing them all. Uh, so it just adds more steps. But anyway, those are announced. You can find them on our website um, under the upcoming breedings and then our dams page and our um, studs page so that you can look at those. But uh, we like to talk about those sometimes and the pedigrees. Did you want to do that? Uh-huh. I actually have set up because it, it went over pretty well last time talking about the breedings themselves on um, Pedigree Explorer or the Breedmate software here. So I've got that pulled up and Pedigree Publisher, I have to remember that. They've changed the name of the software here recently, Ask Pedigree Publisher. So first and foremost, we can grab the two pedigrees that are the litters are born and just take a quick look see here and if you are looking at the website um you'll see what the planned breedings are and their expected timelines and those expected dates that's always something that um people ask about well is that when the puppies are going home or or what's the expectation there um i put the expected you know spring expected summer that's when i expect the puppies to be born um and that means that the dogs come into heat and get bred 63 days before that, and then they go home eight weeks after that. So I like to tell people that puppies will be going home to their new homes approximately four and a half months after the female comes into heat because females usually take a week or two to rise and get bred, and then the gestation of 63 days or shorter sometimes, and then... Home at eight weeks. So, 
first litter. This one's kind of an interesting one here. I'll pull this back up. This is Splash to Gunner. Uh, for those of you that do know who the gunner is here, Standing Stones Shooting It Down, owned by Stevie Shondell. It's actually a shooter snap puppy, and you can kind of see some of the, um, all of the, again, just as a reminder here, all of the color is repeated dogs, and then you can see a coefficient of inbreeding up here calculated out off of 10 generations to be 10.67%. Overall, that's fairly low, but what you will see is kind of how these two dogs connect, essentially. Um, the gunner litter is a little bit tighter. You can see more color up there. And then if gunner breeding, excuse me, himself. And then if you look down all the way to the, uh, the fifth generation there, you've got um, Jaeger off Sir Henry Higgins um, is behind up here at the top I just clicked on it which changed the color but um, that's behind Callie was a Higgins puppy and um, what you're seeing here is Darby was a Higgins puppy so then you also have Hot Rod Shelby and Rev and this is a Shelby Rev puppy right here these are full brother and sister from the exact same litter even um, this is Chappie, which is Vino's daddy. And then the last one down here, which he shows up a few times, but in the actual visible pedigree itself, um, this is, uh, oh, that's Cash. Sorry. I was looking at thinking that was Tango. Um, Sharpshooter's Man in Black, and he shows up right here as well, which that color doesn't look like it a hundred. Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah, because you clicked on it. Yep, yeah, there we go. that was my problem. I clicked on it. Sorry, guys. Um. That right here is your line. So what you've got is a little bit pulling in here and then some more outcross stuff across the bottom, which isn't really that much outcross. It's just not so prevalent up front-esque. Um, ultimately, we can pull up here. Not where I want to be. Right here. All right, so we can pull up. Again, when we looked at this before, We showed a few things, which were, this shows the coefficient of inbreeding, and then another thing that I like to look at on occasion, just to see this. Um, this one's not as tightly bred. The report here shows unique ancestors, 623. So it took 623 dogs to fill all 2,046 spots. It's definitely tighter litters out there and definitely um, more outcross litters. But Hustler, Hillhaven stuff being at the top in um, number of dogs that show up there. So there's a few different things in there, a little bit of a mixture of stuff, but not quite so tightly bred as some others. Next breeding that we have um, is on the ground now. Come on now. Ah, it's moving too fast. Right here. Mako Thunder. Again, more of an outcross. These are some things that you need to be able to do on occasion and have the ability to pull back to, essentially. Right here, we have um, Timber, which is Gunner's sister. So we would look at the potential of something like Let's say Mako Thunder potentially bred to a, this is the game that I play. And I'll show you just a, a quick example of this. But we could go puppy and we could call it a Mako caps lock, please. Mako Thunder puppy bred to a, a splash gunner. Yep. So that would be how I would apply this, add the record, and then go in here to navigate. And the sire would be, doesn't really matter which, but because we don't know what or if or any of those things at this point on who we would be keeping or not keeping. But then you would go here, splash to gunner. 
And then that creates this pedigree that you can look at. And then you get to see. Much more colorful. So this here is <laughs> shooting it down. This is his full sister. That's why you have repeated dogs here. Then you have making waves, which is Splash, which is down and dirty's sister. So now you're getting some, some cousin action, which pulls this whole thing back together. Even though both of these last breedings are a smidgeny of outcrosses-esque then when you pull them back together, we can do a quick um, calculating the inbreed, calculating, calculating. So when people ask us how we plan our litters and what we're looking for, there's a lot of things that go into it, not only looking at the pedigrees of the puppies that we'd be producing, but looking at the potential of what those puppies, if kept, could be bred to in the future, what crosses we can do um, down the road that way, as well as taking into consideration temperaments and personalities mm -hmm. and abilities of the parents in each of those crosses. Um, but that's all things that we look at when, when planning this out. So that's why it takes a while, guys. Trying to stay at least uh, a couple steps ahead, if you will. I shouldn't have clicked that. This calculating everything takes just a second, but this is what will make the stuff display on the pedigree here. But that's... Um, It'll take a second. So we'll thinking ahead and planning ahead allows us to um, not, you know, breed ourselves into a corner or um, breed without intention. Uh, we're trying that's to it. intentionally not just breed putting better dogs, dogs yeah, um, and improve the breed. Not just putting dogs together. Yeah, and... Then looking at what those dogs could be for us in the future um, and where that program can lead us. But and continuing to breed the types of dogs with the personalities, temperaments, hunting style, and ability that we are breeding for and that we enjoy to hunt and be a part of our family. Yep. So a very interesting, um, looks like a lot more color, a lot more of a line breeding type situation. Still not a high COI being 12.8%. I mean, we've done breedings as high as 20 plus. Um, but, um, uh, then what can we see here when we go to this, just to provide an example of something comparable to what we were just looking at. I clicked the wrong button. I apologize. Calculate inbreeding. Calculate. Calculating. Calculating. And then what we were looking at before was this count game. And now look what happened to that number. Before, if you remember, it was approximately 30-some um, 30 30 times. 36, I think. Now Hustler shows up in the 10 generations 63 times. So this would be something that you would consider a fairly line bred on Hustler. Um, and the interesting part, when you look at this here, his percentage blood is 17%, but he doesn't show up until generation 6. I can't adjust the resolution on this, folks, so... Squint. Squinting. <laughs> oh, you can't even see me. I just gave myself away. I'm squ I'm squinting hard. Um, but uh, sixth generation, so you're talking that would be a great-grandparent. Is that right? Parent, Parent grandpa. Great-grandpa. That's four. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. great, great, great. great. So great, great, great-grandpa... Hillhaven Hustler um, actually shows the same percent blood as uh, no sort. Um, it would be approximately the same percent blood as a roughly what would grandparent. That be? A roughly a grandparent. Yeah, twelve and a half would be a grandparent, right? Twenty five percent would Eight. be a grandparent. So halfway between. Yeah, halfway between a uh, grandparent and a great grandparent. So he gains a generation and a half, essentially. But um, so that would be kind of how we play that game out. I can go very quickly through the rest of them and then we can jump into questions for folks. What is the next one down the list? So I can just go in order. Shock to duck. Oh, yeah. Just bread. In the wrong. I'm trying to type underneath of my microphone here. I need 
to just be in this category. Shock to Doc. Pedigree. So here's another one. Kind of a cool one. Uh, we've done a couple breedings to Doc. That's, again, pulling in some stuff. You can see Jacob VD Westwind, which is um, Hustler bred. That ties in, obviously, with some of the things that we were looking at before. And then you can see Higgins to Higgins. So, again, a little more of an outcross being 6.6%. But you just saw how that ties in really well with everything we did here just a little bit ago. Are we still showing stuff? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm totally not being helpful. Yeah. I was like, uh, it doesn't look like we're even still showing stuff. Here it is. Well, Your I screen talked is not uh, showing. Yeah, I talked through that. Sorry, folks. Ah, uh, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. If you were here, you'd be flipping things around and making it work right. Um. Anyhow, this would be a pedigree. Navigator. Now it's showing. Now it's showing. Puppy, what did we just show? That What was that last one that I created? It was Mako. Puppy, Mako. Yeah, Under, there right go. there. Okay. So, again, in here, calculate inbreeding. I pulled this across so everybody can see everything at the same time. Calculating. Count. There you go. 63 times Hustler shows up. Nuts. Next. Who's the next breeding here? Shock to Doc. I did that one, and that was We're up on the screen. That was up on the screen. Yep. Okay. Cool. Then we got Grit to Doc. Okay, that's not going to look terribly different than Okay, and this is going to get a little confusing as we go. Um but here's Grit Doc again, more of an outcross 4.6. Um we really like this dog here. Jeremy Steinley has a very, very, very nice dog, and some of the things behind it tie really well into what we have. So that is a big portion of what is happening here. This is allowing us to breed out and then come back in um, without get venturing too far from the, from the game. So the next breeding upcoming is... Muddy to Archer. Okay, this is kind of a fun one. This is uh, another Aspen Hill dog. And, um, but pulls a lot of our lines in, which is cool. We've done a few breedings with Jeremy and, and Archer is <coughs> owned by Brian Vessi. Yeah. I don't I know how to say I think that's how you Vessi? say his last okay. name. Brian. Yep. But that is, so this is uh, one that we're trying to do. If Muddy in fact comes in, um, Brian works where he won't be available, does some fire and rescue stuff. <coughs> so it's a smoke jumper. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I think it even talks about it in Archer's uh, bio. Interesting. So um, here you can see Muddy, who we know good and well is awesomeness. But then some of your combos in here, you have uh, Higgins again, and then you have on the top side, it's actually... Standing Stones, Gun for Hire, that's Shooter, bred to a Thunderhead dog, which Thunderhead is what's behind Maggie, which would be um, a Cali puppy as well, one of our foundation females. So you can see um, this is at 6.52%. Again, any puppy from this ties really well back into most of what we have. So you can see this is a, essentially a building year on what we're doing and if you paid attention to some of the stuff that we bred last year they were a lot tighter breedings mm -hmm. so tricks to vex quest to vex things like that we um sorry the next one is piper doc okay and we've this got two where, docs yep. being bred this yep, year yep, confusing yep. but this time it's our doc standing stones el tesoro medicine man doc but um yep, this will be his first breeding so piper who is um awesome she will be a master hunter this spring, which is kind of exciting for her. We have, um, this is our doc, I know, confusing on the names, who's a young gun to quest puppy. So that's Thunder Quest. And Thunder Quest is essentially a little line breeding there on Vex. You can see this jumping back and forth there. 
And then at the same time, Piper has some similarities where she's line bred a little bit on a couple things. Well, and this is the in- an interesting mm-hmm. thing to mention. So you've got man in black, man in black, which man in black also shows up on the top side. But then you have Zoom Zoom Zoe, who happens to be a full sister to, well, different breeding, but same, s- different litter, same breeding as Standing Stones, nothing but trouble, which is Nyx. Yep. So you've got, even though it's not colored the same, you have a line breeding off of those things, and you're looking at 9.7%, um, which if we look at number of unique dogs, it's 595, even though that 9%. 565. Yeah, dang. Um, 565. Even though the coefficient is still a little bit lower, this number is dropping because of those. Um, repeated dogs. Yeah, repeated dogs. So very cool. Who do we have next? Tricks to Thunder. Ooh, this one will be a cool one. Tricks is a really, really, really neat dog. Um, spelled their name wrong. Tricks to Thunder. And then you clicked off of it. I know. I know. This one's cool. It is um, Quest, which is a Vex puppy, and Muddy, which would be a Vex puppy. So these would be uh, first cousins once removed or whatever that's called. The You have uh, Grouse Point uh, Hatch here, and then you have Gambles Benny the Jet on top. And again, there is a, a piece of the outcross, but that you have um, a good tie back in here with a Again, any of these dogs can be all bred back together, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, 7.7%. And the unique dogs on that would be 671. So more of an outcross here. <coughs> We're missing a few dogs. I need to go in and do a little research on that. We have... 20, uh, 2006, 2006 out of 2046. So, so we're missing, missing 40, bu- 40 dogs. Yep. And if I were a betting man, I would guess that it's this dog right here that I'm missing most Something of them behind. behind. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm missing 40 30. dogs there. 30. 30. Roughly. 30. 36. Six to be exact. So there's most of them. Next is Quest to Chief. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. So I think you said that literally about every litter. Well, <laughs> I am excited about our breeding program. I know, I know. It's just funny because you literally said that. And this is this is the hard part, people. We plan these breedings because we're excited about them and we want to see what these dogs are gonna produce and we have really high hopes and all these things, and then it's like, I want to keep a puppy from every litter. And we, we didn't keep a puppy from every litter, but we dang sure tried last year between what we kept and what people helped keep for us for the El Tesoro program. And uh, Ethan has fully told me, 100% said, that we don't get to keep a puppy this year. And You need to see my face and her face in this one. What, what did I say? You said that we 100% don't get to keep a puppy this year. Say it again. 100% don't get to keep a puppy this year. We are just a, a tish puppied out after a full year of puppying, and uh, we've got a young one right now, Glitch, which you will see in some of his videos. And another youngish one, Hex, but he's getting older, and he's, like, doing amazing. So he is doing I amazing. think there is a really good chance that maybe towards the end of 2023 that I could possibly, potentially, maybe sort of kind of try to talk you into a puppy. I'll bat my eyelashes at you. Does that work? He said we'll talk about it, guys. So look at the pedigree. So Aspen Hills Invictus one. Again, oh, another one of Jeremy's dogs. Really, really nice. Owned and by Robert. Uh huh. Who's on the live chat this evening? Yeah. I don't know if he still is, but was on the live chat. Um, really, really cool dog. Lots of power. Lots of s- drive and desire. And... He is. Um, he reminds me a lot of Nixer when yeah. I've got to watch him run and just. I wonder why. Here's Nixer right there, his grandpa. Um, this is Shooter, 
to a Nick's daughter, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is a Nick's son, son. to a shooter. No, no I'm just joking. <laughs> um, to Outlander's Maid of Honor, which is uh, Questy's mom. So it's, you can see lots of colors here. This one, again, a little bit higher, 13.61. And then if we go back and look at da -da -da -da, calculate, we are in the 489 category. So we dropped a lot of dogs there, which means consistency, folks. Um, and we've got all 2046 dogs. Uh huh. And I'm all of the things for. that we have talked about, pretty much any of them, you would just grab the dogs that need complemented and throw them together because they're all going to be very complementary on paper. It's just more about then taking, once we've got the paper portion, we look at which dogs are going to be the best fit on a matter of what those dogs what are need. in No such thing as a perfect dog. Yep. So what do we have? There's one. Last but not least, Hazel and Clay. Oh, I am really excited for this one. So Clay was one of my favorite young dogs this year. He's just an uber gentleman of all sorts. And Hazel, one of my favorite uh Oh my god, I Grit love these puppies. I love these comments. We gotta read through some of these before we log out. Okay. Tonight. Um so on this specifically, we have lots <sighs> of color. Yeah, so look at color. that. Sixteen point three percent. This is this the, is the highest, highest one on this, but look at all the color. So it's um rainbow. Hazel is actually a sister, different breeding, but sister to Muddy. And this is a muddy son bred to uh, his aunt. Yeah. Right. So you're getting a little bit tighter there, folks. And if we look at, uh, but still not, still not very tight. Um, oh, are they? Are we look? Are, okay, never mind. Yeah, we should okay. be. Just making sure. Calculating, calculating. Okay. Uh, comes up with 661. This is why we look at the paper, though. It's more tightly bred up front. It's less tightly bred on the back end. That's kind of the differences. The best way I can explain looking at COI versus Total number of unique ancestors. Do you remember the other one? It was higher, 13. but it was still like 13, 14%, and then it was 489. Four. So we're shooting for the 500 esque range. So this one being a little higher, it will still, again, pair very nicely with basically any of the other breedings down the road, which is kind of the direction we've been trying to pull this program. Um, Options. We like our options. Options. And keep our and options open. Hazel uh, style for miles. If anybody made it to Pheasant Fest, they got the opportunity to see that gorgeous picture of her on uh, the DT Systems booth. And cutting back Shoot. now. So to pretty. This and then Clay has an insane amount of style and is it closer like you like me a little hmm. bit? Only if I get a puppy <laughs> this year. See what I have to See, deal with, folks? So this is the funny thing. These are hilarious. Everyone loves me getting a puppy. It's all I'm saying. We've got... Uh, How many goat comments were there? Of <laughs> uh, uh, One or two. Someone said, but what does Aiden say? He says we keep three. That's his favorite thing is we will keep three. And as long as we remind him every day he feeds his cat. All right, folks? He's not much in the help category yet. Yeah, but he does Keyword, feed the kitty yeah. every single day we remind him. Um, <laughs> cat gets her goats if she doesn't get a puppy. Ha, 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 ha. And then if Ethan gets more pigeons, I think you should keep a puppy cat. Cat's getting a puppy. Uh, Ethan needs more than water for the convincing. Sounds like I'm getting a puppy. But not until a little bit later. Called 2024. <laughs> Uh, well, oh, oh, math. So what did I say about the litters are expected? So for example, quest to chief is expected in the fall of 2023, but quests puppies notoriously go home in January. And then Hazel's litter would be after 
request litter approximately based on heat cycles and timing. So again, her litter would also go home like in January. 2024 puppy. See how I worked that there, folks? <coughs> Let's answer some questions. Can you bring it up on the big screen so I don't have to squint? What's on the menu? Konnichiwa. I saw that there was a super chat and then rolling into some questions. Um, I can pull that up here. There you go. Aaron Mumblu said, thank you again, Ethan, for the impromptu training session at Pheasant Fest. My wife and I got to see it live, and it was so cool to see in person, and we learned a lot. You guys are great trainers. Well, thank you, and thank you for the super chat. There were some questions that I wanted to hit on. Okay, go for it. There was one up here. Oh, right here. Um Kevin Martin said, with the online step-by-step -step training that you have, would it be best to order that before I get my puppy so I can get all the correct supplies and stuff for the training? You got it, Kevin. So um, in our online step-by-step -step course, which is on standingstonesupply.com slash courses, there is supporting documents for each lesson, which includes a supply list. So if you're getting a puppy and you're going to want to start training from day one that you get that puppy home, it would be nice if you have time to get the things that are necessarily like a clicker and crate and place board and some of the other things that are listed there, um, nail trimmers, because that's going to be something you're going to want to start off on right away. So um, it'll help you be prepared for not only what you're going to need, but also like get in the right mind frame for that first week, what to really expect um, and what to be prepared for before you get your puppy. And then you're trying to quickly figure out how to get started with the training while you've got the new puppy already in the house. So absolutely, I, I suggest sooner rather than later, so you can be prepared. Mm, I like it. Um, there was some more questions here. Um, there, was a, there was a question up there. Go back, go back. Uh, it says, uh, thank you, the lower number, the better. And we did do a podcast talking about that. And it's a it's couple less people chimed in and said, yeah, that we did a podcast. It's, it's less about the number um, being lower or higher. It, the number kind of gives you a good base point, like a, a quick look. And you need the higher number the fewer ancestors there are. That's really what it comes down to. And the fewer ancestors, the fewer places you're pulling from the genetic pool. And ultimately, too too tight isn't going to. I, they say I've said there's a couple line breeding pros that say too tight is not. There's no such thing. But um, there is, I think, such a thing of. I don't know. Anyway, so Ethan did do a podcast with Fred. Really good information. Also, a little while ago, like a year or two years, I don't know, time kind of just melds together after a while. We did a Yawa back when we called them Yawas on like pedigree breakdowns um, mm, and yeah. did um, some research pedigrees and things like that. Uh, and I feel like that one is also really good information and shows a lot more of like those screenshots and things like that too. So. And my brain was working at that point <laughs> in time, which it is even better. Um. So it depends what doc you were looking at, Caleb. So Aspen Hills doc is a master hunter and an NA. I don't know if he was an NA prize one. He might not have been in any prize one. I'd have to look back. Um, but Doc, our Doc, is an NA, I think, prize three, three. dog because mm. of the track. Um, and then he'll be campaigning and running through Senior Hunter and, and Master utility Hunter and, and Utility and stuff, too. Yeah. Just a young dog doing his first breeding this year. And we know what potential he has and what kind of trainability he has. And if he has swimmers. We're going to check that out. Yep. Yeah. Um, question from, where'd it go? It just skipped. Uh, 
There you go. Steven Petren- Petrenko. My puppy Kona is going on her 10 week is going on to her 10 weeks and she knows here sit and stay really well. She's still learning kennel. Only thing she will pee inside when someone new comes over any tips. That sounds like either excited or, or submissive, submissive piddling. Piddling. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely something that it's good to recognize, especially because it sounds like she's only 10 weeks old. Most of the time, people have only had their puppy for a couple weeks at this point. Um, and if we can try and interrupt and redirect that behavior so that it doesn't become conditioned, hopefully as she gets better bladder control and more conditioning her out of that response, it won't become a chronic problem of every time she meets a new person, she piddles. So preemptively going, oh, somebody new is coming over or I'm going to have company over. Let me take my puppy out and empty their bladder right now before they come in. And then don't let her interact, engage with, and meet the new person. Um, Let that newness wear off. And there's you know, there's no written rule either that she even has to meet them. If she's going to have that level of excited, submissive piddling, um, why don't you just crate her And after she's had an opportunity to potty until she gets a little bit older, has a little bit more um, bladder control um, so that we can hopefully not condition that type of submissive peeing or excited peeing, whichever the case may be. Exactly. Is there 2024 puppies available? Um, I'm technically taking deposits for my 2025 wait list. Um, The way that our wait list and process works is I only take so many deposits per year because I don't want to oversell my litters. We only produce so many puppies within a year. um, And that number is based on mother nature, guys. Like I can plan and plan and plan, but... I could have a litter not take. I could have smaller than expected litters, things like that. And I don't want to disappoint people. So I would rather have the opportunity to move someone up from the 2024 waitlist to a 2023 puppy or the 2025 waitlist to a 2023 puppy if there's enough available and other people pass on that opportunity than say, hey, you had a deposit for 2023, 2023, and there's just not enough puppies. I'm sorry you don't get a puppy this year and you've been waiting two years. So, um, I undersell my puppies, um, so that I can hopefully, which I've never knock on wood, not been able to get a puppy in the year that they had a deposit down if they were ready for a puppy. Absolutely. So maybe, maybe there's a potential for a 2024 puppy, but no guarantees. The best way to have that chance is to be sure you want to commit to getting a puppy from us, put down your deposit for 2025, and be flexible and ready when I potentially call and say, I've got a puppy available. Um, Ethan, is the Standing Stone Kennel sweater for sale? We do not have them for sale right now. I just got some stuff for myself. But what we are planning for this year uh, with as our relationship, I've been using, wearing, whatever, Orvis stuff for years and years and years. We are planning on getting a, I don't want to say limited, but a run of Standing Stone gear. It will be available to patrons first because stocking things like this, I mean, they're a slightly more expensive product. It's or, it's an Orvis sweater thing, right? So they cost more money um, to have a bunch of sizes left over that we struggle to sell. So we will get um, we will get a handful of different things in this year, the stuff that we're wearing on a regular basis. And then again, once that stuff goes live on the store, it will be available um, to to patrons first and then we'll open it up. We'll do limited runs this year to because I know that people have requested more um, logoed gear, which we we love to have you all represent. RBL Jackson said, random question, if that's okay. When you crane hunted in Texas, did the dogs wear those Rex specs to protect eyes? How would I go about training my lab to wear those? Got to work him into that for next year. Great question. Um, I didn't bring any dogs for the crane hunting portion, and it was all eye related. The guide, a guy that was out there with us, his dog wore Rex specs and ran around and chased 
Cranes. And we had a short hair in for training recently that he planned on crane hunting with and um, doing a bunch of other waterfall um, hunting and retrieving based hunting with. So, and he got her rec specs and we trained her through retrieving drills and things like that with the rec specs on. So that's exactly what you need to do. You need to get them first used to wearing them, running around, um, and then even making retrieves with them and things like that. So um, get a pair, fit them to the dog, and then start um, getting them used to wearing them and doing their job while wearing them. Missing the guy with the pink gun YouTube content. Shooting one was hilarious. Um, now that we have an awesome videographer and editor on staff, that is going to come back. We're getting a, a lot you of growth already shot this year. Two yeah. videos that'll be edited and ready to roll out on that on your pigeon stuff. And once weather rolls around to the nicer spectrum, um, we'll be able to do some more outdoor like shooting videos. Uh, we have this cool thing called the crazy quail that I really want to do a shooting uh, competition with Ethan. Absolutely. The uh, biggest thing holding us back on that right now was just time. Lots of growth this year, which is exciting or in the last year, which is really exciting. But it's it's caused a few things like the guy with the pink gun channel is is fun for me. I enjoy doing that. But uh, there were definitely projects a little more important at the time. So. This was a good question from Michelle Vasquez. First season in the books. Whoop, whoop. That's awesome. Um, with their wild man. How do you or where do you pick up training again? Not sure if it's the first season blues, but I'm stuck on where to start now. Nice. I think that the biggest thing is probably to sit down and reflect on how the season itself went. Um, we did a video with Thunder. Mm -hmm. um, an evaluation of where he's at after his first season and then kind of talk about where we need to go from there based on how things went, where he was at, and then what our goals are moving forward. So I know um, this is something that sometimes you don't even know how to talk those things out. This would be a great way to utilize uh, the consulting time with us. You could sit down and we could actually chat with you for 30 minutes and go over um, – how things went, what your goals are, and then help give you better direction on where to go moving forward. Yep. And those consults are available multiple ways. Um, if you have access or have um, signed up for the online training course, there's discounted uh, consults available to sign up for at the end of every lesson there. Um, if you're on Patreon and you're at a specific tier, you can sign up for those, and those are included with your Patreon subscription. And then we have them actually available on our online store, I believe, or yeah, maybe they're not on the store yet, but I can send you, you can email me and I can send you a one-time um, consult scheduling thing that you pay for um, at full price, but then we can set up those consults that way as well. So lots of options to get our time for a sit-down consult. There's a fun question. How many miles is on? How many miles are on Ethan's truck? How many miles do you typically put on in a hunting year? So this is something that's changed pretty drastically. I think um, back in the day when I had one vehicle basically for everything we did. Um, what did we do? Sixty thousand miles a year, roughly. I think it was insane. Uh close. Well, I put on. The truck that I have now, which is a, a newer truck, meaning it's the first three-quarter ton truck that I've ever owned, but bigger trailers and all of those kind of things need uh, need a truck to pull it. So I got that this year. I'm not a huge fan of new vehicles, so it was new to me. And I think I put about 30,000 miles on it. Um, this, is, this was the second season with it, though. Is that right? Mm, I no. think yes yes the second season so at least the second season between 15 and 20,000 miles a year on the truck alone which only does dog stuff basically it's literally uh, Ethan it's all work related Aiden calls it the dog truck it's the dog truck it's got dog boxes in the back um, we're either testing or training or hunting or some combination of the above Traveling, so. traveling with dogs. Yep. So uh, ab about 20,000 miles a year probably on that. 
Yeah. But we drive a lot um, just from a, the standpoint of we're not in town. So if we need to run errands and mm-hmm. do things like that, we're driving a lot because I put twenty to 30,000 miles on my daily driver car every year. Yeah, I mean, we p- we're we probably still in the category of 50 Six to 60,000 miles. Just spread out over yeah. multiple vehicles. Yes, because <laughs> so. we, we do have... Uh, different vehicles for different purposes. Mm-hmm. But, yep. okay, guys, I promised Ethan tonight that we would keep it limited to an hour because we have puppies to take care of, we are short on sleep, and our brains just don't have enough power left to make coherent sentences, I don't think, anymore. So, thank you guys again for always sitting in with us on Wednesdays for our live stream. We love it um, and look forward to it. Uh, We will not be here next week. We will be out of town at a Nashville Yukonuba event. Yukonuba, represent. Um, But then should be back the following week. Oh, my gosh, it's the 1st of March. I didn't put out a newsletter. I'll I'll work on that. This week kind of went out the window. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you all. And, uh, oh, and no bingos. I, I don't think I anybody no bingoed. Bingos. We Did also anybody forgot have about a bingo? that. Uh, let me just check and see if there was anybody close. That one was close, but not. That one was close. This one says. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I just did that. But whoever this one is has it because I also talked about that. Yeah, we do have somebody with a bingo. Oh, no. What? There are a whole bunch of the same letters on there. There's an error of some sort. You see that? Like, uh, every card is the same. Um, what? <sighs> That's so confusing. Oh, it says when it was created. Huh. Weird. Well, folks, you gotta you gotta be in it to win it, or or whatever. Um, do we have any bingos? No bingos. Sorry, folks. We will uh, we will bingo. Well, I don't see a bingo person calling out their bingo card. So, all righty, folks. Until next time, I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the dog trainer.